Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news we're following from Grand Blanc Township in Genesee County, which is where crews are battling this apartment fire. Yeah, this is at the fairways at Woodfield. It's right near I-75 and Saginaw Road. As of right now, we're not aware of any injuries. We're going to monitor this situation and bring you any updates as they happen. We are also following major news tonight from the state capitol in Lansing. History being made on the state's highest court. Kyra Harris Bolden will become the first black woman to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. Governor Whitmer is appointing her to fill the seat vacated by Justice Bridget McCormick. The state lawmaker from Southfield lost her bid to be elected to the court in the November election. She's now set to join the court in January. Victor Williams is in uh, following the big announcement. Victor. Yeah, well, what a major milestone. Kyra Harris Bolden has really shattered the glass ceiling in a move that we have never seen before. This appointment is without question a great honor, and I want to thank Governor Whitmer for the faith she has placed in me here today. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. And just like that, State Representative Kyra Harris Bolden has become the first black woman appointed to Supreme Court in Michigan. Kyra, you said you want your daughter and all our kids to know what they can achieve because it's hard to be what you can't see. Today, you are opening doors for them all. Governor Whitmer was the one who appointed the 34 year old into the position, filling the open seat left by Justice Bridget McCormick after she resigned. I've had the great privilege of knowing her for years and her career in public service serves as an inspiration and to succeed her is truly an honor. Bolden is a state rep for Southfield serving her second term in her hometown. She's also been a lawyer for the past eight years. Being given the faith in the form of this appointment is something I accept gratefully and humbly. One thing she wants to make a difference in right away is making sure certain families see justice. For families who have experienced injustice in whatever form, we know that the pursuit of equal, fair, and whole justice is a responsibility that we receive and pass on through generations. And Bolden will officially start her term in January. In Lansing, Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Victor, thank you. Now uh, let's turn to the weather as we take a live look at Metro Airport, where things are busy but on time as far as we know travelers are rushing to uh, get home for the Thanksgiving holiday here and in fact unlike in years past we are really not seeing a lot of major delays at the major airports this is the flight awares misery map it tracks delays and cancellations and right now things looking pretty good with Dallas Fort Worth having the most delays uh, with 22 so we are in the clear at the moment so what about tomorrow and Thursday let's get over to Kim Adams tracking the forewarned travel forecast hi Kim Hi, well, it's almost like the butterfly effect where when you're traveling, a flap of a butterfly's wings can change the weather 2,000 miles away. But we're not tracking any major systems across the entire United States, but there is uh, a chance of a few showers down in Dallas, and those could turn severe as we head into Thanksgiving Day. But for tomorrow, just a few showers, a couple snow showers in the northern plains, and then for Thanksgiving Day, again, this cold frontal boundary stretches from St. Louis down to Dallas, but it doesn't cause any really huge concerns, but it will bring us some rain here in Metro Detroit by Friday, but it does keep us dry for Thanksgiving. If you're traveling up north, this is a very mild pattern for us this time of year. Temperatures will be in the upper 40s Thursday, low 40s for Friday. If you're traveling across the Midwest, here's a few of the cities you'll head to. Columbus 57, partly cloudy skies, really no major problems across the entire United States. I'll have your turkey trot forecast coming up, but if you are traveling, make sure you download our forewarned weather app. It's the best way to keep track of weather, not just here in Metro Detroit, but all over the country. You just go to your app store and type in WDIV and it's a free app. It's the forewarned weather app. All right, Kim. Well, Bernie's here now with some big news concerning the best sporting event in the world, the NCAA <laughs> You've tournament. You've been loving those, I yeah. know. Final four coming to Detroit. We're going to have to wait a little bit, though. Just, for just a little yeah. bit. It's fantastic. <laughs> this event is amazing. The year will be 2027, the site Ford Field. It's the NCAA Final Four, and Detroit knows the drill. For this event, since they hosted it back in 2009, you remember North Carolina beat Michigan State for the title. We've got highlights of Ford Field, and it should look too different. Oh, this is, look at that crowd coming in and everything else, huh? It's the last time with great 
Big stuff from 2009. MSU made it to the title game, so it's kind of like a home game for the Spartans. Again, it's less than five years from now, which is plenty of time to find a good parking space for anyone <laughs> heading downtown. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get a cone really down. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. Really good stuff. Let's see yeah. a little bit in sports, right. Bernie. Thank you. In more news tonight, President Biden is expected to extend the pause on federal student loan payments. That move comes as the White House faces legal challenges to the plan to cancel student loan debt. No word yet when that announcement will be made official. In just the past hour, Detroit City Council voted down a new contract that would expand and improve the city's paratransit system. And that comes amid major complaints from people who rely on that system to get around. Sean Lay, live on the west side of town following this vote. Weird day, Sean. Weird day. We're following this really closely for Detroit's most vulnerable citizens, Devin. Here's what happened. Detroit six, uh, District 6 Council Member Gabriela Santiago Romero. She voted yes on this big new contract for transit, then asked to reconsider her vote. She voted no, which means the contract was not approved. The city is now saying tonight services for the disabled transport services are now cut, not expanded. Also late today, the feds sending a letter to the city saying the city is now close to violating the Americans with Disabilities act all based on what happened right here. If this passes today, my goal is to ensure that we hold you director accountable. Members of Detroit City Council putting DDOT's director in the hot seat, insisting Detroit's disabled community desperately needs a champion on the inside of the city when it comes to vital transportation needs. It's a big issue impacting a lot of people. We, we've got to show better respect and do better. Each day, hundreds in the disabled community rely on rides to work, the doctor, the store, and the current provider known as TransDev, most agree, has failed our most vulnerable. We want initial training and refresher training for the drivers, dispatch, and customer service. The city wanting a new five-year, $49 million deal that extends the TransDev contract, but with DDOT taking over key elements of dispatch, scheduling, customer service, and more training to vastly improve Detroit's paratransit service. Without the funding for a new deal, the city says it would have to eliminate 700 daily rides for people. We'd only be able to provide 300 rides, so we'd have to prioritize reservations based on urgent medical needs, important medical uh, appointments, and the like. And that's what the city says is exactly happening right now. So let me break it down for you. DDOT says uh, DDOT takes paratransit in-house January 1st. That's going to happen. Council already approved 30% of the funding for that. The city says what council essentially did today by voting no was turning down 70% of the new contract what would expand service. Bottom line, Devin, city is saying starting December 18th, the city is not taking any reservations for after the first of the year unless it is an urgent medical need. Council goes home for the rest of the year. So more debate. Watch this closely in the coming year, but a lot of people impacted right now. No doubt. All right, Sean. Well, there is a noticeable uptick to report in today's new weekly coronavirus numbers. While the average number of new cases is declining, COVID deaths are up and it's noticeable. 275 new deaths have been reported in the last seven days. RSV infections have been threatening the safety of children across the country and here in Michigan for several weeks now. That's right. Now three of the largest hospital systems that care for children are updating the local situation and the news is encouraging for a change. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the latest numbers and what it could mean as we head into the Thanksgiving holiday, Doc. Exactly, Karen and Devin, or Kim and Devin rather. RSV is usually always a winter infection. Seeing a surge in the fall is usually is pretty unusual, especially of this magnitude. Now I sounded the alarm here in South Southeast Michigan just over a month ago. Now, fortunately, as with all surges, though, there's going to be a relief and it may be coming. It has been a really difficult month, maybe even month and a half, uh, where we've seen RSV cases really kind of take toll. That's Dr. Whitney Minnick, Pediatric Chief of Emergency at Corwell Health East, formerly Beaumont. I would say this year we probably have peaked based on kind of the past week numbers. The first week of November, there were 577 cases of RSV followed by 520 cases. And this past week, RSV cases have declined to 302 cases. It's a sentiment Dr. Rudy Valentini, Chief Medical Officer at DMC Children's Hospital of Michigan, echoes. 
I just talked to my ED director a few minutes ago, Kurt Stankovic, and he said that the um, he's seeing an absolute reduction in you know, the number of bronchiolitis cases that come in. Bronchiolitis is caused by the serious airway inflammation with an RSV infection. At Children's Hospital of Michigan, the trend has been similar. The first week saw 329 cases, followed by 352 cases, now decreased to 232 cases. The overall opinion of my clinical uh, providers in the emergency department is that the episodes of bronchiolitis in our emergency department are falling. So we are seeing fewer children impacted with clinical bronchiolitis and there and it, and it is sub being supported by the test numbers dropping. Henry Ford Health reports the same drop. November's first week found 214 RSV cases, followed by 242 cases with the drop now to 175 cases. Now, while this is very favorable, it still remains to be seen if this trend is going to continue. Also, I should point out RSV may be improving, but it is not gone, which means you should still take care to keep young children and infants away from sick people. And this is especially the case if you're traveling because other parts of the state and certainly the nation have not documented this well, same sure, increase. Sure. Well, what about the flu? I'm concerned. Are we going to be trading one virus for the other <laughs> now that, you know, the flu is on the rise? Well, you know, that may actually turn out to be the case, you know, compared to the rest of the country, the flu hasn't taken off here yet, and there's clearly no way to avoid it altogether. Now, the good news, though, is with the flu, there is a vaccine available for kids age six months and up, and of course, it is definitely yeah, most recommended. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. all right, Doc.